did it. That was that last stint took a while. It's so still and quiet here. I feel guilty for talking. Yes. Hooray! I am an individual who is legally allowed to travel again. Woohoo! <gasps> it is carnival here in Grenada. There's food stands, there's bars everywhere, there is people in costumes, feathers, sparkles. And it's gonna be awesome! Change of costume, got lights in our hair, reflective gear on, and we're gonna head back to shore and do it all again. Last time on Red Seas, we left St. Martin and sailed almost 400 nautical miles south towards Grenada. The conditions were less than ideal and we had some pretty big waves smashing through our cockpit. We saw 40 knots for the first 24 hours before things calmed down and we spotted some dolphins near Guadalupe. We heard a Mayday call relay as we passed St. Lucia and our hearts sank as we spotted something on our radar just 10 miles in front of us. We spoke with the Coast Guard and sailed towards it, keeping a close eye out for a boat with five people on it. So we've given them our position and where we've seen that blip, where you saw that blip on the radar. Yeah. So I told them we're heading that way and they said to keep their eyes peeled for a five meter boat. Oh, not five people on board. No, five meter long. I think it's white on one side and blue on the other. Oh, no, because I heard interior. But that makes sense. If it's a five meter boat, it's a wee fishing boat, Probably. you would be able to see the inside. And the inside so might like be blue. The inside and outside is, is blue white. and the outside is white or it's the other way around. Like okay. Should well be. So we'll keep our eyes open and see what pops up. Yeah, so it's like eight miles away now. So we'll keep going this way, I guess. towards the point where we saw the marker on the radar and there is no sign of a boat anywhere here. Um, we have called that back into the Coast Guard so that they know that what we saw wasn't what they're looking for. It was like slightly darker cloud above us, so I think it was more just a weather warning. It was kind of a relief that the boat wasn't here because uh, my first reaction was, oh good, you know, if there was a boat this far out that was struggling, that would be really scary. But obviously there was a mayday call, so it is somewhere. So uh, we just need to hope that the Coast Guard find it uh, and somebody finds it and helps them soon. We haven't been asked to change our direction, change our course or anything looking for it, so we can therefore only trust that there are people closer to St. Lucia who are able to help. So for us, we just carry on and uh, hope that we hear good news later, I suppose, somehow. other than that monster fish that stole the entire lure and broke the line all we're getting is sargasm this uh, like seaweed that just floats along in clumps and lines in the ocean so like every five minutes you have to go pull the line in shake the seaweed off throw it back in and every single time i think oh so annoying if it does it one more time i'll just bring the line in and, and put it away it's not worth it but then it goes off again and you're like well it gives me something to do to pass the time so so far both lines are still in the water and i don't know Maybe at sunset we'll uh, suddenly get a bite and get some dinner. After a long night dodging a bunch of lightning storms, we were greeted to this amazing morning. Did it! We're here! Did it! That was that last stint took a while. 
We had lightning strikes, not on the boat, thankfully. We survived that. No, there were four storms we had to dodge, though. Four storms, which you then zigzagged through as well, yeah. And then we had a boat kind of alongside us, but six miles over, yeah. going at the same speed for ages. Um, and then it just, when we got to Grenada, the wind just completely vanished and it went like a mill pond flat. I haven't wanted no wind the whole way, but it's quite nice when you've got to motor anyway, just as you arrive. I'll, I'll put up with it since you've been awake for three days straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, now we just need to find a mooring ball. And our friends are here, Joe and Mandy on SV Kuma 2, who we haven't seen in about two years when they rescued us from the boatyard. We haven't seen them since then, and they just arrived last night to this same anchorage. So yeah, we're going to catch up with them and uh, hopefully park right next door. And there they are! So still and quiet here, I feel guilty for talking. I even feel like our engines are probably ruining the anchorage. Everybody's just starting to wake up. Here we are with all of this noise. And we did it. We had hide onto the marine ball. Engines are off. And listen to how quiet it is. And look how clear the water is. And now we have to ruin it because <laughs> there's actually a boat anchored a couple of uh, balls in front of us who we'd been messaging online because they are selling an autopilot and ours is uh, struggling. Working hard, but uh, not always going in the direction that we want. Um, and so we said, oh, just hold on, because we're going to get there soon and we'll buy it off you. And um, they've said they're leaving in half an hour. So we need to drop the dinghy, wake up everybody in the anchorage and go and buy this autopilot from them. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, we're about to ruin it. in Grenada. There is no rest for the wicked. We, <laughs> we arrived at about 6 a.m. yesterday morning, spent the whole day desperately trying to catch up on sleep. I failed, hence I am wearing sunglasses. Uh, and then about 4 a.m. this morning, music suddenly started blaring and the party kicked off because it is carnival here in Grenada. And if you can hear any music behind me, that's the party. It started early this morning with a big street party from 4, running through till about lunchtime. And, uh, and now we just can't resist. We're going to have to go and see what it's all about. Joe and Mandy on Kuma 2, who you might remember from way back, the Good Samaritans, who actually helped us out to get here the first time. They're at anchor just over there. Yeah, lots of drinking, partying, dancing, lots of loud music. It should be fun though. So there's like music coming from every different direction. We can hear everybody starting to get set up and all of the bands I think are gonna parade down this street right past us. But there's food stands, there's bars everywhere. There is people in costume, feathers, sparkles. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Spice my sweaty, sweaty, And it's starting! Here come the kids in the traditional costume. Truck of us, 
leaning up against the wall and everyone has just started shaking their bums at the camera. There's people standing on top of the walls, there's people climbing up the, ra up the railings. It's just absolute mayhem. to Indy for like an hour to rest up, get some food in us. The music hasn't stopped on shore, so we've just changed a costume, got lights in our hair, reflective gear on, and we're gonna head back to shore and do it all again. just about recovered from it all and uh, now we can get on with the job that we actually came to Grenada for. Today we are heading into shore to try and find the person that we have had Ian's passport sent to. We had to apply for new passports from overseas which is a massive headache and fingers crossed the new one is actually here and then we can you know carry on traveling and going to new places. following along you'll know that we're heading toward Panama. When it comes to visas these days, a UK passport kind of requires a lot more days on it than it used to. So although my passport isn't about to expire anytime soon, it's got more than six months on it I think. In fact it's got more than a year on it. But for most visas they're going to ask for more than six months at the end of the visa time. So for that reason we have to uh, commit and basically order up a new passport in advance which has been a journey. We had to communicate with UK passport offices, which in the middle of summer was a bit of a disaster because everyone in the UK was trying to go on holiday and you may remember some of the news stories around that. Um, and then we were getting conflicting advice depending who you spoke to and which office as well. So at the end of the day, we managed to, well, Brandy managed to work it all out. She deciphered the code and we are, uh, are now at least told by email that my passport should be waiting for us at this foreign address. Uh, and I'm not quite sure how much we have to like prove who we are. <laughs> I don't know if we can just ask them to open the envelope and be like, see it is me, honest. That's it, all of your ideas inside the package that they have. Yeah, they took, <laughs> they took my driving license, they took everything. So yeah, I don't really know how this is going to work, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. this dock looks. I'm like gonna step off and just fall straight into the sea. It's kind of hanging together. <laughs> Woohoohoo! Didn't fall to my death. Where are we headed? Um, this general direction. 
I looked it up on a map before we came, but I now don't have enough data on my phone to look it up here. I think there's a road that goes that way somewhere. So my official passport, my only form of IDs that I've left, is sitting in somebody's mailbox in a building we don't know where it is. Excellent. It definitely feels like it's only a couple of days after Carnival. It just like not too many people around and the whole vibe is kind of sleepy and in recovery I feel. Much like me. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I find it, it's quite funny that if you didn't know what had been happening a couple of days ago you'd be like, oh there's oily bottles and rags and things like that. I really left this place a mess. <laughs> Which compared to when they actually had the party going on it's actually really clean. Oh my goodness, yes. Like any white car that was parked on the road just ended up grey and black and oily by the end of it because of all the handprints smeared on the side of the paintwork. <laughs> I think yeah, that might be the road up there. All right, let's try it. Even though we've been here for like two years now, I still haven't got over the kind of the comparison with if you were going to collect your passport in the UK, <laughs> you'd be like in the middle of a city going to a very important and proper building. You'd probably have an appointment and meeting with security guards and you were just walking up a residential street surrounded by palm trees. Yeah. I love it. Into Maggie's house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very official. There's a cannon. <laughs> There's two? Two cannons. Oh my goodness, they do take security seriously. There you go. I think this is it. And the good news is... They're here! Thank you so much. Seriously, this is fantastic. You're very welcome. The best Anytime. news is that we thought we were just picking up the passport, but all of the uh, like supporting documents we just assumed had got lost in the post. But there's two things here, so we're assuming that it's both parts. So Perfect. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> super simple, super easy. So yeah, thank you so much. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. Everything you need is right, right here at Wholesale Yacht Parts. Nailed it. <laughs> awesome. There you go. So anyone else coming through here. <laughs> Check comments and descriptions, you'll get the information yeah, you need for sure. Yeah, this is where you need to go. <laughs> we haven't actually checked the envelopes yet. We haven't, no, I'm just still reeling over the hilar hilarity, hilarity. Hilarity. Hilarity of She's that conversation. such a lovely lady. And Sherry's amazing. So Sherry's business, we didn't really explain, but she, <laughs> she does a few different things. But one of the services is she kind of looks out for cruisers in that she does like shipping, you can get things posted to you. And yeah, she's just such a lovely lady. So she was the person who helped us when we got our copper coat shipped in That's last right, year. Yeah. And then because we couldn't come to Grenada, we then couldn't get it. So she was like hugely helpful in getting it to another boat who then sailed it down to Trinidad and got it to us and everything. So that's how we knew her. And this is not really a service that she offers, but she was like, yeah, sure, I'll help you out. So Wait, important no, documents enclosed. I feel like you should probably open this rather than All me. Right. It's probably illegal and I might go to prison. Important. Okay. <laughs> My uh, most recent. Oh, is it going to be blue? Oh, no. Huh? Not. Oh, it is. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> okay. But it means we can travel! Okay. Yes. Hooray. I am an individual who is legally allowed to travel again. Woohoo! Look at me go. Yep. Good to go. the dinghy and uh, head around to a quiet anchorage just around the corner but ever since we almost fried our in fact we did fry our uh, engine starter battery when we put the the dinghy lift winch in we've been really cautious to look after it and so we usually start the engine as we're lifting the dinghy however on our sail down from St Martin we've had to get a little bit creative in starting our starboard engine um, because yeah it, it's not starting from up here so if I turn the key you can hear the ignition go on <gasps> that time it did work! Hey, I fixed it! <laughs> Normally that doesn't happen. Um, I think there's, it, I don't know, a dodgy connection to the solenoid or something in the grounding cable. I'm not sure what's going on. I need to jump down into the engine bay and take a look. But um, yeah, on the way down it was sort of hit and miss if the engine would start or not. And that's definitely not a situation I want to find myself in because if it doesn't start from the panel, as you might remember from the day that we ran aground, we need to jump down into the engine bay and hit the actual button that's kind of on the back of the engine and difficult to reach. And then it does start, but uh, it's not ideal when you're underway. So there's another job for the list that I need to learn how to do.
I think we're too used to St. Martin where you see like 30 knot winds every other day. And here it's just so mountainous that none of the wind appears to get to this side of the island. And so the seas are just kind of completely flat all the time. And there's never any wind, so we're just motoring around the corner. But it feels like a completely different world.